It's not working. And then they start making excuses. It is so precious to hear that this precious person and how many like Jerry's outlook? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a downgrade. I mean, she was blinging there. I love it, Jerry. <laughs> Matching all over the place. But how many are glad that the Lord in his faithfulness, right? That, that, you know, here it is two years, you know, and a lot of times we're thinking, well, Pastor Mike, I've been praying. I prayed for 15 minutes and it hasn't happened yet. Well, sometimes you just need to stand, stay in faith, and apply the principles that she's hearing right there. She's, it's right from the word, right? You stand, you give thanks, you cast those thoughts out of your mind, right? Thoughts are going to try to come, come to you. You just don't be afraid. Just keep believing, right? Two years. And she had to go there every single time she went to the doctor or dentist. And I, I remember I had to go through that where they're telling you to come every three months, you know, yada, yada, yada. And that's, that's tough. Every three months she's going there and she's hearing, you need to go to the orthodont or periodontal or whatever. And you, you got your teeth are bad. And her, in her spirit, I, I give her credit. She said, no, or about to say no. no. I mean, no, you can do that. Amen. That inside of you, we have the very same faith that Jesus operated in. We don't have a generic version of faith. We don't have the great value kind of faith, right? You ever just go to the store and you go, this is the generic version. It's just as good. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. How many know the Bible says that we have the faith of God? The very same kind of faith that Jesus had when he operated, calmed the storm, spoke to bodies, right? Uh, blessed the bread. That faith that he lived in, you and I have that same kind of faith in our spirit. How many like that? Yes. Everybody say, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Mercy now, here's what we want to do today. We want to stay stirred up, right? Well, I know some of you are here and you're like, oh, Pastor Michael, if you only knew the week that I had or what I've gone through. Listen, God's seen it. The Bible says there's no take, temptation taking you, but such is common to man. God sees it. He's faithful. There's a way of escape. And right now, today, this morning, God wants to speak to you. God wants to minister to you. And what you got to do is do like Samuel. You just got to get quiet to the Lord. Right now, let's just get really quiet and just allow our hearts and say, look, with the spirit of meekness, just gets very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And just say this together. And they say, Lord God, you know what I need this morning. My ears are open. Lord, speak to me. Speak a word that I need of encouragement. Let revelation come. Let inspiration come. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, that the Holy Ghost is leading me and guiding me and teaching me all truth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right. Everybody say, walking with God. Now, last week we started talking about walking with God, walking with God. And we said that in the very beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he created them so that they could have fellowship with him. Amen. Fellowship. Matter of fact, after Adam fell, God was reaching out to him. He said he heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the breeze. Right. And Adam heard this was a common, common thing that happened all the time. He fellowshiped with God. God did not make man for the purpose of man being over here and being a distant creator. He created man so that he could have intimacy, fellowship with man. Everybody say fellowship with man. And so we saw that this started to happen. We saw that Abraham, he walked with God. We saw that Isaac walked with God. We saw that Jacob walked with God. They had this wonderful, beautiful relationship with our God. Notice this. I want you to see what the New Testament says here. We're just going to get, we're excited about the word. But let's go over to the book of Corinthians. Let me see here. Uh, 1 Corinthians, we're going to go to 1st chapter, verse number 9. 1 Corinthians, the 1st chapter, verse number 9. And it says, God is faithful. How many are glad God is faithful? God is faithful. That means he really, he's reliable. He's trustworthy. You can depend on God, right? So God is faithful by whom you were, what, called? Everybody say called. called. Everybody say called. called. Into what? God's faithful and he called us into fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. fellowship. Notice the word for call. I want you to see it. Slide number seven. How many love the word? Slide number seven says this. It means that God called us into fellowship. The word call means to call by name, out loud. It means to invite. So what did he call us? He, he, this is God's heart for each and every one of us. It's very, very personal. He's calling out loud. 
very clearly. You might be hearing it this morning. God's saying, hey, I'm here with you and I'm calling you. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. He said, I'm calling you into fellowship. Notice the word for fellowship. I want you to see it. Slide number eight. Slide number eight. And in word fellowship, and you can just see these different words here. Uh, it's a Greek word, kononia, which means a connection, right? But also you'll see it means partnership. How many are glad that we have a partnership with God? But also that word goes into different shades. It means intimacy. That means very, very close familiarity. Can you and I have a close familiarity with the Holy Spirit? A fellowship with God? Can we have a friendship with God? A closeness, a communion with God? Can, can God literally share thoughts to you, his heart with you, his feelings with you, right? And it comes because of a close relationship. Now go back to that scripture. The word says we're called to this. God's inviting us to this. This is where, what God's heart is for each and every one of us. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Everybody say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm called. To fellowship with you. Fellowship with you. Amen. How many like that? Yeah. But it's very interesting. A lot of people, their relationship with God is based on a lot of feelings. And so when, it, when we think about fellowshipping with the Lord, a lot of times they go, well, I'm feeling the Lord. Now, how many know you can feel the Lord? Yes. How many have ever felt yes. the Lord? Yes. And how many are grateful when we feel him, right? Yes. But how many uh, can testify together with me? There are times you feel absolutely Nada. I mean, there might be times you feel full of joy, you're excited, but are there times you just go, you know what, I'm just not feeling it, yeah. right? But does that mean in any way, shape, or fashion, or form that God is not with you? No. No. See, a lot of times the barometer for people in their relationship with God is not faith, as we're going to see in a moment, it's how they feel. Yeah. You know, if things are going good, then they go, hey, you know, God's with me. But if things are going bad and our dear sister's like, hey, man, you know, we're, we're going through some things, but they know better to go, hey, God's with us. This is changing. The yes. devil is a liar. Yes. Amen. Notice this. I want you to see this here. This is Genesis, the fifth chapter, verse number 21. And we're going to just get some principles here. How, how, you know, we're not basing our relationship on how we feel. It says Enoch lived 65, 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. Now look at verse number 22. And it says, And Enoch walked with God, everybody say, after, after. he begot Methuselah. Everybody say, 300 years. 300 years. So notice this here. It says that e Enoch was 65 years old, and he begot Methuselah. But something happened after he was 65 years old that it says he walked, everybody say, walked, walked. with God. Now we know God was there. Right? I mean, what do you mean? God was, he's ever present. So it wasn't like all of a sudden God just showed up and he to Enoch and said, hey man, I'm here. Hey, I want to walk with you. God was there. God did not change. The change came from Enoch. So for 65 years, he was not aware of the presence of God. He was not walking with God. Something happened after that that all of a sudden, he started to walk with God. Notice the word for with. The word walk means you're walking, right? But slide number 10, it says this. And I want you to see it. How many love the word? Amen. It means all of a sudden, from that point on, the relationship with God, right? He was, it was near, right? Together with. But I also like this. When you're walking with God, you become a partner with God, and God wants to help you. And we're seeing this very clearly with this ox moving toward a mark. When plowing a field, an oxen plows, uh, plowman drives the oxen toward a distant mark in order to keep the furrow, you know, the, the furrow straight, a traveler arrives at his destination by following a mark. All of a sudden, when he was walking with God, God was directing him. God was giving him purpose. God was giving him a mark. In other words, when he started to walk with God, it wasn't impersonal. God became involved in his life and involved with his purpose, and involved with his destiny. And how many are excited that you and I can walk with God? One step at a time. And do you realize how important it is to walk those one step at a time? 
a lot of times people say, I want to get over there. But listen, if I just started just going off just a little bit, you know, just, just a, a shade, like an airplane. Like Jerry's brother is a pilot, and I'm sure he could teach this much better than me. I remember back in, um, when I was in Bible school, that uh, I don't know, maybe some of you are familiar when the, 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 there was a plane, the Korean airline kind of flew uh, into Soviet space, and, and they, this, they ended up shooting that plane down. It was a passenger plane, and they shot it down. And what happened is when the plane started, they were off course just by a little bit. And because they were off course by a little bit, they, they got into the airspace where they shouldn't have, shouldn't have been. Now, of course, they never should have shot the plane down. But the fact of the matter is, getting off course. Is it possible that you and I, if, you know, we could miss it a little bit? And so you say, well, you know, I'm just missing it just a little bit. Well, you could just miss it a little bit before you know it. You, you, God wanted you over here, but you're over there. Everybody say, the steps of a righteous man are order of the Lord. You and I are only responsible to follow and, and obey what God's telling us to do right now. And you cannot avoid the right now. <laughs> but I'll get there sooner or later. You know, God will just, you know, he's good and he is good. He's merciful and he is merciful and his grace is sufficient. And thank God he will get you back on the road if you, if you really turn to him. But why go through the hassle? Do what God's telling you to do right now. Right. Yep. I'm about to say right now. Right now. Notice this here. Hebrews the 11th chapter, verse number six. Everybody say right now. Right now. But listen, has anybody else ever had this happen besides me? Where in your heart, you just know what you're supposed to do. And it, it could be in a multiple different, and God wants to be involved in every area of your life. Yeah. And some people say, well, God's only involved with me going to church. How many are glad, I'm sure Jerry's glad, that God was involved with her teeth? Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? So, so I, you know, I just want the Lord just to, you know, just, you know, just he's only wants this, this, this Sunday morning thing, you know? But God will speak to you concerning all areas of life. Yes. I believe truly in a holistic God. What do you mean by that? You ever hear like holistic medicines, you know, all the different aspects, you know, your soul, your mind, your spirit. Well, I believe that to be true with God. I believe God, he, not only does he want us physically well, he wants us to be solically well, yes. right, spiritually healthy. Yes. And the key is following the Lord. If the Lord tells you, you're, maybe you're, uh, you're, you're, there's been times me and my wife have literally walked out of a movie theater. How many know it's okay to walk out of a movie theater? Yes. Yes. Right. And to be honest with you, you probably, uh, if you haven't, you probably should. You should go to a movie and walk out. Just to go, you know, I ain't watching these uh, girls like this or these guys like this. And, you know, I mean, have, you know, are you guys hearing me? You should. But see, the Lord, he'll speak to you. Yes. Right? Maybe the Lord's going to say, okay, don't feed on that. Don't do that. What's he trying to do? He's trying to help you solically as well. Uh, emotionally, sometimes people get caught up with all different kinds of emotions and all different kinds of feelings. And you're feeding on something. And the Lord might say, listen, don't feed on that because that's producing a negative result in your soul. Then there might be a time the Lord might even speak to you concerning your physical well-being. You know, Lord, heal me, heal me. And the Lord's like, uh, you should probably take a walk sometime. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Some of you say, no, I just believe God will just take care of it all. How many know God will speak to you? He'll tell you, you shouldn't be drinking that. You know, maybe there's certain uh, liquids that shouldn't be good for you. Or you'll be like, you shouldn't be eating this kind of food or too much of that kind of food, too much sugar. No, I don't believe the Lord will do that. Well, if you're not hearing him, it's because you're not open to hear him. He wants to set a mark in every area of your life. Yeah. Financially, the same thing. God will speak to you financially. Yeah. And these little incremental steps are so important for us in our life. You cannot ignore the little step. No. And you'll know it. You'll, you'll kind of get that sensing inside your heart like, mm, I need to do this or I shouldn't do it. And it's never condemnation. God's never browbeaten you, right? He loves you irregardless if you did it or don't do it. But the fact of the matter is, you can't blame God on the, on the hindsight and go, oh, dog, you know, how come I'm not blessed? And deep inside your heart, you're like, ah. Are you guys hearing me, church family? Everybody say, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready, Lord. How many would, you know, to get help, you have to be open to receive help. Yeah. You ever try to help the help the, the, the ones who think they don't need help? I, I, those are the ones that will last maybe three minutes in my office because it's like, I got nothing for you. <laughs> I can't pet you. I can't, you know, there's nothing I can do for you, you know. 
probably praying. Yes. Because there's a truth. When you, when you realize, I need help, God will get that help to you. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. Yes. He's our standby. Yes. Amen? Amen? So as we're communicating these things and as we're sharing this word this morning, there are going to be things that are going to rise up inside of you that might seem like has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But it's the Holy Spirit reminding you of something that you need to do or not do. Are you guys hearing this story? Everybody say, no judgment, no condemnation. All right, because that's the God that we serve. He loves us. But no, notice this here. It goes on to say this here. It says, but without faith, it's what? Impossible, Impossible to do what? Please God. Please God. But what's the first thing that we should do? He that comes to God, everybody say, must. must. What are we supposed to believe? That he is. That he is, right? How, how many believe God is? Yes. Right? How many believe he is what he said he is? Yes. He's here. Yes. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, wait to get a bigger crowd, then I'll show up. <laughs> how many are glad Jesus is here yes. now? When you pray, you can't be looking at your ceiling and think that you're praying to the almighty plaster God, right? You are praying to a real God. He's there. He's inside of you. He is. He that comes to God must believe he is. Now, that takes faith to do that, right? Because I don't know about you. I didn't wake up this morning in my room. Now, I do have one of those motion lights. So if I get out of my bed, the light just starts. We, we bought one of those because I go, honey, I'm tired of stumbling on things. So we bought this motion light. We plug it in. So I get up and it's dark and I'm, well, there comes the light. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Right? How, how many thank God for motion? <laughs> I love it. I tell you, I love it. And then we put it on the other side of the bed and Jordana said, no, honey, it's, every time I roll over, it's going on. I said, well, it didn't bother me, but bothered her more. But I like light, you know, and the, it's stumbling my toe, right? I don't know why I say that, but uh, the purpose is, is that I just said it and I have no reason why I said it. We thank God for light. <laughs> he said, he, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. No, the right, reason I said it is this, is that, you know, so many times we think, well, you just wake up and, you know, you, you, those little cherubims are singing and they're on a harp there. And, and you can just see it through your roof and you can just see heaven and you can see the throne and the glory of God. And you just, you kind of float out of bed. How many floated out of bed today, you know? You kind of just, you know, you, there was a little water on your floor and you just walked on top of it, you know? You just, no, no, no. I mean, when you woke up this morning, you're like, okay, you know, but how many know God is with you? He that cometh to God must believe that he is. But not only that, don't stop there. What else are you supposed to believe? He's a rewarder to what? To those who what? You guys are diligent seekers this morning. How many believe that there is a reward? Some people think, well, Pastor Michael, if I serve the Lord and I please God and I put him first, and like you're saying, I will lose. You will not lose. When you put God first, I'm telling you, he is a rewarder. Yes. Amen. How many like that? Yes. And God will turn your bad situation around. He is faithful. Yes. Amen. I believe in the supernatural bounce back. Amen. Amen. Well, look at this. Go down to look at verse number five. I want you to see it. Glory to God. He said, by faith, Enoch was what? That he should not what? And was not found. Isn't that amazing? That means they looked for him. <laughs> Could you just picture like Methuselah? You know, at that time, Methuselah was what? 300 years old, right? And he's, he goes to his mother. Does anybody see uh, Dad Enoch? And no, they, you go on the field. Anybody see him? Let's go to his favorite walking spot. They could not. They, they searched for him. They could not find him. And he says, because God had translated him, why? Before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Everybody say, please God. Please God. Isn't that beautiful? In other words, he was walking with God by faith. And then the next verse says, without faith is impossible. Please. It's all faith. I remember when I was in Bible school, one of the instructors was, it was beautiful. And it was a woman, she started communicating on, on, on this particular thought about fellowshipping with God. And it was like, all of a sudden, it, it came alive in my spirit. Because I think a lot of times, if we're not careful, it becomes so impersonal. And she brought it down to a real simple way. She goes, you know, when I was in my car, you know, I would just, I would just acknowledge God's with me. I would acknowledge the presence of God. 
God is, God is with me. Thank you, Lord. I'm not alone. I mean, just simple thoughts, simple communication, saying that, verbalizing and speaking it. Lord, I am not alone. You are with me. You are an ever-present help in time of need. And you're not going by how you feel. Notice this. I want you to see it. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number seven. How many love the word? Woo! Woo! Thank you, Lord. It says, for we walk by what? Faith. Not by what? Sight. Everybody say faith. 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 Not by what? Sight. So we walk by what the word says. We walk by what God says about himself, right? We walk by our inner conviction. We walk by our persuasion and our confidence. He said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Notice the word for sight. We're going to flip it around. Slide, uh, slide number 13. We don't walk by sight. The word sight means form, right? Shape. That which strikes the eye. That which is exposed to view. Signifies the external appearance. We don't walk by what's striking our eyes naturally, right? We walk by faith. And not by sight. This is when you put on your big boy pants. Like our dear sister, I love testimonies. That was great. And when she kept saying, no, I haven't got that. <laughs> A doctor, a, per, a person that shouldn't, right? They, they know, right? And, and she's like, damn. What was she doing? She was walking by faith. Yeah. Not by what everything that's like, that the guy was saying. She's like, I got him. How many know that'll work for you too? Yeah. Notice the word it says walk. I want you to see it. Slide number 12. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. The word walk means that we conduct oneself, right? To make your way, you progress. It makes due use of the opportunities. I like the last part. It means to regulate, control, or maintain your life. We walk by faith. Amen. And not like this. Because how many know your world and our natural world, my natural world, is going to go like this all the time? Yeah. Up, down, up, down. Everybody say up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down. Do, you, do you notice that? Like I just said, how many know you just, you, we can be level. Faith causes us to be level in the midst of the storm. Yeah. <laughs> Faith causes us to be consistent yeah. when the world is not consistent. Right. Are you guys hearing me, church family? Yeah. How many like that? Okay. All right. But notice this. I want you to see it. He said uh, that by, he pleased God. Right? He had this testimony that he pleased God, Enoch, right? And, um, and I, I just want you to see it. And uh, like last week we brought up the scripture, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, Right? And, and we gave you the definition for that word pure. And Cass, if you could just put slide 14 up. It means the blessed are those that are uh, pure of heart, right? For they shall see God. The word pure means clean, right? Not mixed. You're, you're not, you're, your heart is clear, right? We thank God for the blood. But it, it means blameless innocence. You're, you're pure. You're not doing this. You're... You're wholehearted to the Lord. Your, your soul is whole. You're serving God, spirit, soul, and body, right? And it says, he said, the pure of heart shall see God. And how many, that's what we're talking about here. Walking with God. How many want to, see, not so much see him here naturally, but in the spirit see him. I mean, I, I remember Jordana was telling the story about, uh, I don't know, tall and Desiree, but she was like uh, at the beach. And she's, uh, something about, she told me the story about you and um, the, um, the, what, the dollars, the sand dollar. Why don't you give that testament real quick, sister? It's a good testament. Woo! You know, how many love Desiree? <laughs> I know she loves me so much now, but testing one, two, three. This is, I mean, I just want you to hear, because I, what I, when Jordana told me that, I, there we go. When Jordana told me the testimony, I thought, wow, you know what? It's such a beautiful, simplistic relationship with God. And I think it's something that we all, this is a part of walking by faith. God is not complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go to the beach a lot, as everybody knows, and I, I, was, I always talk to God on my walk to the beach, you know, and I walk and I talk to God and I say, God, show me, because I'm needy. I need you to show me things, and he always shows me something. So I'm walking in and I'm like, okay, God, you know, I never have found a whole sand dollar. So I said, if I can find just one, please, just one, that's all I want. <laughs> so literally, two seconds later, I find one, like a whole one. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, well, how about three? <laughs> <laughs> three of them, please. And then literally, 
one, two, three, and I found 20, 15 wow. to, I think it was 18. So I was like, all right, I got greedy. <laughs> because I always get greedy with God. I was like, God, I need you to show me. Show me more, show me more. And he, by his mercy and love, he always shows me more. And I found, I think it was 18, whole sand dollars. <laughs> And got, this guy was walking, and he's like, oh, she won. She found them all. <laughs> <laughs> but how many believe that the Lord and his mercy, isn't that beautiful? You're saying to yourself, what, what's that got to do about walking by faith? Here she's walking to believe, beach. She's, she's communing with the Lord. Her heart's desire was, I wish I could get a, find a sand dollar. You know, Lord, Father, I just pray for one. Boom, 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 boom. Somebody say, well, that's just coincidence. Well, let her live in her coincidental world. Because it is a wonderful, wonderful word. But it's simplistic. Can we ask the Lord? Can we communicate with the Lord? Can we talk to the Lord? Absolutely. But a big key, again, faith. But also, and I kind of alluded it to the beginning, is walking in what God showed you to do. Like if you want to see the Lord more in your life, you and I have to just um, literally is walk in the light that he's given you right now. Notice what it says here in 1 John, the uh, first chapter. And we're going to start reading verse number five. Again, we talked about faith, but now we're going to integrate it here to us. Is that if pleasing the Lord, the, going back to the pure of heart, right? In other words, whole heart. He said, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God, right? And the word pure means no admixture. I mean, you're, you're, you're sold out, right? How many sold out hearts in this room today, right? So he said, and this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is Light. Everybody say, God is light. And the Bible says, and there's no darkness at all. In him, there's no darkness. Look at verse number six. He says, if we say that we have, there's that word, fellowship. Everybody say fellowship with him. And, and, and what does it go on to say? And, and walk where? Is it possible that believers can walk in darkness? Now that, are you guys, it doesn't mean you're, you're lost here, but it, how many know? You could be missing out on some wonderful things, right? And so this is what he's talking about. He said, if we say, I have Konania with God, and he says, but you're walking in darkness. He says, we lie, and you what? Don't do the truth. Are you guys hearing this? Look at verse number seven, church family. How many love the word? He goes, but if we walk in, in the light, everybody say, walk in the light. Walk in the light. As what? As he is in the light. What happens now? We have fellowship. Now, there's that kononia. There's that partnership. There's that direction. There's that God speaking to us, right? We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Everybody say, walking in the light. Do you see it there? Now, that's not Pastor Michael talking. Can we elevate our kononia or our fellowship with God by doing and walking in the light that you have right now? Can you see that, church family? And this is how Jesus lived. Jesus lived a life where he totally, completely uh, walked in the light of, of, of the Father. Notice this in John, the eighth chapter, verse number 29. How many love the word? Amen. How many are going to walk in the light that God's given you right now? Yes. That means if God shows you something, it, 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 you don't want to negotiate with God, right? No. How many know it's, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yeah. right? Yeah. That's it. If he tells us to do something, what should you do? Yes, Lord. Right? If you want quick blessing, quick obedience, man, just jump on board. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Look what it says here in John, the 8th chapter, verse 29. Let's let some of these scriptures marinate in our heart. It says, and he that sent me, this is Jesus speaking, is with me. Was Jesus conscious and aware of the presence of the Father? Yes. Matter of fact, if you go throughout the scriptures, he talked about, he said, I do the things that he's, I see him doing. I say the things. Jesus was in constant communication fellowship. He is the great example of communing with the Father. He said, he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. Notice the next phrase. He goes, for, he's, he's saying what we just read over in John. For I do always those things that please him. Yes. Is it possible that we can do things that please the Lord? Yes. Is it possible that we can, like uh, Enoch, it said before his translation, he had this testimony that pleased God. And over here, he says, hey, I always do. I always do. Everybody say, I always do. Always. Look what it says in 1 John 3, 22. 1 John 3, 22. How many love the word? How many love the word? How many walk in the light? Amen. Praise God. 
Look at it says, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, right? We know the commandment of God. The New Testament is walking in love, right? Because in love is the fulfillment of all the commandments, right? If you walk in love, you're not going to steal. You're not going to commit adultery. You're not going to bear false witness. He says, because we keep his commandments and what? And, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Can we do things that are pleasing? Let me just give you the opposite. Can we do things that are not pleasing in his sight? <laughs> right? Can we just be honest about that? But everybody say, not me. Everybody say, not me. Look what it says in John, the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, verse 21. Hallelujah. How many love the word? How many walking in the light people we have here? Hallelujah. Look what it says. There. It said, he that what? Hath my commandments and keepeth them, right? He, he, Jesus made it very clear. He is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved in my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. He said, he said, Pastor Michael, this sounds religious. No, this is what Jesus said. He said, if you, you're walking in the light, he said, he said, you love God. And he says, I will love you. And God said, I'm going to manifest myself to that person. Notice that scripture in the Amplified. I want you to see it. Slide number, um, actually, um, number 20, uh, that in the Amplified cast, verse 21. He said, the person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me, will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him. Now, that doesn't mean God doesn't hate you if you're messing up, but he's talking about, but what he's saying here, this. And he goes, and I will show, reveal, manifest, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. How many want that in our life? Is it important to walk in the light that you and I have to do the things that God's prompting us to do, to, to honor the steps that God's put in our life? He said, if you'll do that, God promises us what? He's going to make himself real to you. Are you guys hearing this? But isn't that beautiful? Some of you are like, I don't know. This seems like a lot of work. <laughs> but it's there in the scriptures. Look at Colossians 1, verse number 9. This is a prayer. Paul prayed this for the church. Colossians 1, verse number 9. How many love the word? So Paul's writing to them, he says, For this cause, after they were born again, since the day we heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. Is this a prayer that we should be praying? God, I need spiritual understanding. I need some knowledge, Lord God. Paul's praying this without ceasing. Look at verse number 10. He also goes on to say, That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. What is he praying? that they would walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul is praying for the church that they would walk worthy unto the Lord unto all pleasing. Can we walk un worthy unto the Lord unto all pleasing? Yes. He's praying this for the church. Yes. Look at verse number 11. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Verse number 12. How many love the word? Giving thanks in the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Yes, we're meet. We're partakers. But what he's saying, he's praying, God, show you why so that we can learn how to walk in a way that's well-pleasing to the Lord. That's what Jesus did. He walked a life that was pleasing to the Father. He said, I always do those things that are pleasing to God. Look at Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse number uh, 20, guys. 13th chapter, verse 20. How many love the word? Who are we getting it today? Yes. yes. Everybody say, I'm walking in the light. In the light. He said, now, the, again, here's a prayer. He says, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, it goes right into verse 21, make you what? Perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is what? Is there help from the Holy Ghost? To, to be able to do things that are well-pleasing to God? Yes. Didn't the Father say that to Jesus when he was being baptized? He said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well-pleased. Yes. Can we hear that from the Father, that the Father will go, Jackie, I'm well-pleased with you. Yes. Jerry, well done, pleased with you. Yes. Can, can you hear that? Amen. I've heard, and I don't say this in a prideful way, there's been times in my life where I've heard the Lord in my heart that the Lord's like, 
You ever feel the thumbs up from heaven? Yeah. It's not that God's Fonzie up there going, hey. I mean, you just know in your heart, man. Some of you are like, who's Fonzie? Well, anyways, <laughs> Lord of God, he was cool. <laughs> but anyways, well-pleasing. Everybody say, well-pleasing. Well pleasing. Everybody say, well-pleasing. Well Amen. Can, can, can we get to that place, church family? Can we, can we, can we go, oh, this, this, it's right, it seems good, it's right? Hall, hallelujah. But that doesn't mean you're perfect in everything that you do, because none of us are perfect, right? No. And in the sense that, that we, we're, uh, we be, we're perfect in Christ. Yes. But look at this, look at 2 Chronicles, the uh, 15th uh, chapter, look at verse 15. Just give me a little bit more time, guys. We're going to get you to a good place. Amen. But excited, I'm really excited for the word. Everybody say, well pleasing. Just, you just, yeah, it's, it's good. It's right. He goes, and all Judah rejoiced, and at the oath, am I right? I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. They sought with, look at it. He goes, and they, they swore with all their hearts and sought him with their whole heart, desire, and he was found of them. Look at that. And the Lord gave them rest about, round about, verse 16. And, and also concerning. Uh, Maka, <laughs> Maka, <laughs> the mother, notice that the mother of Asa the king, it says he removed him. Notice what Asa did. He removed her from being queen. So this, this, this young king, because she made an idol in the grove and Asa cut down her idol and st stamped it and burnt it at the brook of Kedan. So this is a good thing that he did, right? I mean, this is amazing. His mother was queen and he's like, you know what? You're not worthy to be queen. So in his heart, right, he said, no, you can't be queen no more. I mean, oh, that's a tough thing when you got to go against your mother, right? You got to take her crown off. Right? Who's going to take the crown off Queen uh, uh, Maka, right there, the mother? So look at verse 17. <laughs> but the high, notice this now. He, he did a good thing there. But notice this. It says, but the high places were not taken away out of Israel. So, so, so he, he didn't do everything perfect, it seems here. But notice what, what it goes on to say. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. That's an amazing thought. Now, that doesn't mean consciously or unconsciously he was trying to disobey the Lord. But in his, he was doing what God told him to do. I mean, he removed his mother and he, he, did, he did a lot of good things. But, but here it makes it very clear that, that he didn't take down the high places out of Israel. He, he could have did that. How many know that in our life, there's probably some things you could have did more of. Yeah. Like you might have said, you know, Pastor Michael, I fasted one day. And you, then all of a sudden you get a witness. Oh, you, you could have fasted two days. You know, how many know you can constantly, constantly be under condemnation? Yeah, you read a, a chapter in the Bible, you know, and you go, yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, mm, I could have read more chapters. I could have read the whole book. I could, I, I could do this. I, I could, you know, you, you could constantly beat yourself up. Now, he, the, the reason why, I don't know why he didn't take down the high places. But there's something precious here that God said that this kid, all the days of his life, his heart was perfect. Notice the word for perfect. I want you to see it. Slide number 28. Can you and I have a perfect heart by not being perfect? Yes. Yes. Is there anybody in this room that's doing everything exactly the way you're supposed to do it? You could be missed. Now, you make your little alterations. That's the cool thing about God. He's constantly, right, clipping our hair. Right? Buffing us up. <laughs> you go, okay. And you go, okay, I'm doing pretty good. And then the Lord goes, well, come here over here, buddy. You got to wipe that nose there. <laughs> How many of you remember your mother when you were a kid and, and they would just, she'd get that, um, her, her uh, they used to have handkerchiefs back then, and then she'd lick it and then wipe your face? Uh, Does anybody remember that? Yes. None of you, some of you are blessed not to have that. But I, I remember my mother, she had 10 kids, and that thing was like just loaded with her saliva and our, our, all our germs. She'd go, come here, boy, you got chocolate on your face. <laughs> I won't eat chocolate never again. <laughs> uh, you guys are blessed. He said his heart was perfect. It means to be complete. It means to be full. It means to be at peace. It means to be made whole by adding or subtracting something. It's a variation of the word shalom, but it's, it's salam. See, it's a little different variation. But the point is, is that he, his heart was perfect. Like he, he did... To his best of his the best of his ability, he was doing what God told him to do. And so God said all his life, he had a perfect heart. Can you and I have a perfect heart? And maybe there's some things in our life that we didn't get, get to yet. How many are glad that we're perfect in Christ? Our spirit is perfect. But how many realize until the day you go home, none of us are ever going to have that glorified body until we get our glorified body. 
Are you guys hearing that? Yes. Now, that's not a license to sin. Right. Right. What I'm teaching this morning is walk where you are. Walk in the light that you have. Yeah. Now, look at this. I just want to do in closing, guys. And uh, let's go to Acts, the 15th chapter. How many like the word, love the word? Look at verse 32. So how, how, do, you, how do you ascertain what, what God's leading you to do, what God's saying to you? I mean, it's good. Like when you're, when you're sowing and when you're giving, you know? If you're like, you know what? Uh, you just, in your heart, this is the key. God will, you'll, you'll, he'll, he'll help you in your heart. The Bible says your heart is prompt to do it, right? When you're giving or, or whatever you're doing, it's from your heart. Like you should never feel, and this is where a lot of times people, um, like for instance, uh, uh, feel obligated to do things. How many know God doesn't want you and I to feel obligated right, to do God. anything? Now, I got obligations to my wife. I got obligations to my kids, right? I can't say, I don't want to feel obligated. I ain't supporting you no more, she, vice versa. You know, That's not right, right? We're, there's a good, healthy obligation. But then there's, did you ever have it where people force you and make you feel obligated to do something just because we're, maybe it's family, you know? You have to do it. How many know those words don't fly with me at all? Like if my kids came up to me and said, yeah, you have to do it. I don't got to do nothing, you know? Why? Because a true offering to God is with your heart. Right. You want to do it with your heart, with your spirit. Like if I said to you, hey, everybody next week, you are going to bring an offering to Pastor Michael. I want chicken wings. I want pizza. Uh, you're going to make the cake. You're going to bring the, uh, the appetizers, right? For I have decreed it and said it because that's what I want, you know? You're like, dog, we got to go to church here and listen to this guy. And now we gotta, he wants us to bring us food too. What's up with that? No, it, uh, it's, it's from the heart. Right? Um, you're not obligated. And so when it comes to serving and pleasing God, it's God inside, as we're going to see in a moment, is that the Holy Spirit helps us to ascertain it's good. It's like our dear sister a couple weeks ago, and she's like, uh, Bridget, and she's like, you know, you know, I felt in my heart that I was doing this, and the Lord said, and she was happy with what she was giving, right? And then all of a sudden she felt like, you know, up it a little bit. And, you know, and so she had a choice, but, and, and she did it, and again, I'm not taking up another offering, but the point is she, she did what God told her to do and it opened the door for blessing, and it felt good. Yeah. Like, you know when you're doing the right thing, it feels the right way. Yes. Yep. Are you guys hearing me, church family? It just, it just feels right. Now notice this. this is, and Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brother with many words and confirmed this. So what's happening here, very quickly, they're in Antioch. They just, in the 15th chapter earlier, there was this big meeting in the church. And the big meeting in the church was, does everybody need to be circumcised? And so because the, the, the Jewish people that got saved, a lot of them were like, hey, you still need to be circumcised. And so Paul is preaching, you are not saved by circumcision. You're saved because of your faith in Christ. You're saved because of what God's done. And so there's this big meeting going on. You know, they're like, hey, you need to be circumcised. You need to be under the law. And so they come to the conclusion in the meeting James, uh, the, the head of the, the, the leader of the meeting, says, you know what? It seems good to the Holy Ghost and to us not to put this burden on them. And uh, the, so they don't need to get circumcised to be saved. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant in the Old Testament. The New Testament has a different type of circumcision. It's the circumcision of the heart. And so they had this letter that they were bringing to Antioch to the Gentile believers. And how many know they were pretty happy to get this letter? Because you're an older man, you're like, I don't want to get circumcised, right? And if you don't know what circumcision is, go look it up, Google search it, look at the images or whatever you want to do, because it'll gross you out, okay? Not that I've done that. The point of the matter is, he goes, he goes, to, they go there and they tell these people, you know, it seems good to the Holy Spirit that we're not supposed to do this, you know? You don't have to be circumcised externally, and uh, because it's not, it doesn't give you any brownie points with God, you know? And so... So, so Judas and Silas, these are the two representatives. And so they're exhorting the people and they're confirming with many words. Look at verse 33. And so, and after they tarried there the space, they were let go. In other words, in peace. You guys did your job. You gave your assignment. You, you said what you wanted to say. The, the, the brethren in Antioch said, go back to Jerusalem, go in peace. Now look at verse 34. Notwithstanding, one of the guys that got sent up there, his name was Silas, it said it pleased him, everybody say pleased him, pleased him. Uh, to, to, to abide there. 
Notice the word for pleased, slide number 31. This is, this is a, a spiritual principle. The word please means to be the, to think or the opinion. It, it seems, it seems good. It, uh, it appears, to, it, it, it pleased him. For some reason, his friend Judas, right, Judas, he was going back to, to Israel, uh, Ju uh, Jerusalem. But Silas just kind of goes, I don't know, it just seems good. It pleased me to stay. This is what we've been talking about all morning. We're talking about pleasing God. Does the Holy Spirit help you and I please him? Absolutely. He just felt it would have been displeasing to the Lord if he left. But for some reason, even though he didn't understand it, he's like, I don't know, I'm supposed to stay here. Even though he might have families, friends in Jerusalem, but it pleased him for some reason, for some unknown reason. It just seemed right. Is this walking by faith? Yes. Absolutely. You're just, you know, the opposite could be true. You ever been in a situation where it's like, it doesn't feel right? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's not pleasing to the Lord, so don't do it. Right. But in this particular case, it's pleasing. Jesus said, I always do those things which please the Father. It was like, it's right. I'm supposed to go to the woman at the well. I'm supposed to go to Lazarus' house today. I'm supposed to walk on water today. Because <laughs> yeah. it pleases. The, can we get, uh, have such a communion with God that in our hearts we go, it, it's, it's, it's okay, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand it, but it, it's pleasing me. Yeah. I go by this. I mean, this is like one of the, the, uh, one of the great indicators for me in found the Word, of course, this is the Word of God, you go with the Word. But the, that, that, the, the Holy Spirit in that. Yeah. And my dear wife, and she knows, she'll go, well, we should do something. And, and, and I'll just, and, you know, I'm like, I'm not ready. I don't feel it. <laughs> and if I don't feel it, right. I don't go, well, Jordina really wants to do it. <laughs> now, if she was the head of the house, I'd just defer to her. But there, if, there's, if, I don't get, if I don't feel comfortable about it, because usually, because when it's the Lord, we're never, every major decision, we've always united. Right. The Holy Spirit's talking to her, talking to me. Yeah. You know, and, she, and sometimes she's actually kind of nudging me here a little bit. And, and I'm like this, and I go, maybe I got to look, pray about it a little bit more. But we kind of work together. But it's that inward pleasing in my heart. I, I don't override that for anybody. Zero, never do, never will, by the grace of God. And so go back to the scripture cast. We're almost, doing, almost done. He goes, it pleased him just to stay there. Can that happen to you and me? Just yeah. Yeah. seems right. I don't know. It seems right for me to be in this church. I don't know. There's bigger churches. There, there's pastors that got better looking hair than this guy. I mean, oh. it's not about the hair. <laughs> We like Jerry's glasses. Why don't he put those glasses on? Come on now. Jerry's more. Come on. No, it just, just seems right. It seems good. I don't know. It just seems right. I don't know. Is God going to do that to you and me? Yes. Or you just go, that seems good. So now look at verse 35. And Paul, Paul was the leading missionary. He was the biggest minister of the time. Paul was seeing more fruit, more results than any other person that was alive at that time. And Paul had a partner named Barnabas. And they, 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 were, they continued in Antioch. They were there. And they were teaching, preaching the word of the Lord with many others. And so, and so look at verse 36. And so and some days later, after Paul said to, to Barnabas, Paul goes to him and says, hey, let's go again and visit our brother in every city where we preach the word of God. And he says, let's see how they're doing. So Paul's got an idea. He says, you know what? Let's go backtrack and just see how these people that we ministered the word and see how they're actually doing. And so verse number 37 and Barnabas, he was determined. Everybody say determined. How many of that's the wrong word here? He was determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark, verse number 38. And he goes on to say, but Paul, look at the next word. Paul, he thought not. Do you, do you notice the different stronger words here? Bar Barnabas is like, mm, we got to take that guy again. And Paul said, I don't think it's good to take him right now because, uh, when, when, because John Mark, this, the, the person that Barnabas wanted to take, well, on their first missionary journey, he forsook them. They were, they were like halfway up the road, basically. I think they went to one town or so, and all of a sudden he's like, I'm, I'm leaving. And so Paul, Barnabas had a, such an encouraging heart. He's like, no, we got to get this guy back in the ministry. He's got to get him go. And Paul's like, I don't know, it doesn't seem right to take him. Because he, he kind of, he's not ready. And it wasn't because, if you read later on in the New Testament, it wasn't because Paul had an attitude toward Mark, John Mark, 
Matter of fact, I think it's in Timothy. Paul said, uh, tell him to come and bring some papers. And he, and he said, he's profitable for the ministry. This kid came around and, and, and really became a very profitable minister. But Paul, for some reason, he was like, I don't think it's good that we should take him. But Barnabas was like, we got to take him. He's determined. There's no flexibility. How I many know you and I, if we want God's best, and even as a husband and wife, me and my dear wife, I don't go, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Never. You can ask her. And there'll be times she'll say something. I go, oh, you know, and I'll just, you know, it's just, she's speaking truth. And I want to hear truth. And I know she loves us and she loves our purpose and she loves our destiny. So I want to hear it. But uh, we're, it's never, and, and, can I just interject this? If you really want to follow God, you have to be humble. Yes. You can't be so prideful that you go, you know, I'm right. And even though you're wrong, you know in your heart you're wrong, you have to be humble enough to go, I, 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 I'm missing it here. Some people can't do the a spiritual about face because they're too prideful. And I'm encouraging you, dear people, that if God shows you something, and maybe it's coming through here, and we got, I can go, well, I can't, I can't uh, let Jordana know that I was wrong. I was so emphatic that I was right about this. And <laughs> after you pray about it, the Lord's like, no, you're wrong. You know? How I many know it's okay to go back out there and say, you know what, I prayed about it, honey, I think you know, the Lord was showing me that the Lord was showing me, the Lord was showing me that you were right. How many think that goes a long way instead of like, <laughs> does anybody know who was, what kind of speaker was like that? <laughs> right? There's a <laughs> he goes, but Paul, notice I thought it not good. Almost done, guys. I know you guys are thinking about your lunch. Because but Paul thought not good to take with him them, and he, and, and he and departed because he said he left us. Look at verse 39. <laughs> and, and notice it, and it said the contention was so sharp between them that they departed one from another. In other words, they split. They couldn't even, can you imagine that? These guys saw so much of God's glory and God's power that they, 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 they couldn't, you know. As a matter of fact, if you read the next few chapters, Paul, you know, the story picks up with Paul, you know. How I many know sometimes you just got to, you know, but it was so strong, and so Barnabas said, I'm taking Mark, and he ends up taking Mark, and he sailed to Cyprus. And so Paul's there in Antioch, look at verse 39, or 40. And, and who did Paul choose? Silas. And departed from a rec being recommended, look at this. But notice there, it said Barnabas was departed, right, and just took Mark. But it says, but Paul, he chose Silas, and he being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Who were the brothers blessing here? They're, they, were on, they were with Paul on this one. But the point was, get the picture now. Silas, he goes up there. He's supposed to just preach, tell the people, hey, you don't got to get circumcised. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. His friend Justin, Judas goes home. He's, he, in his heart, he's like, I don't know. It, it pleases me to stay still. It's, it seems good for me to stay. He didn't know why. He had no clue. But a few days, weeks later, Paul and Barnabas getting contentious, split. Paul needs somebody to go with him on a missionary journey. And Silas was at the right place at the right time. He never would have been there if he wasn't doing what pleased God. He would have missed it totally entirely. He could have said, well, I'll just go back to, to, to Jerusalem and Paul would just send me a mail, an email or whatever, send me a, 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 a carrier pigeon and get, come get me. No? How many know you got to do, even though it didn't make any sense to me, because I don't know, it just seems good for me to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Our brother Joe, I'm going to give testimony, when he, when he was transitioning out of a job, right? You're like, ah, something's not right here. And it doesn't feel good. It seems good for me to quit. Right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. He's like, I don't know. Him and his wife were praying about it. It, it pleases us to leave a job without having another job. That's the big thing he was struggling with. It was, it's easy to leave a job when you're like scooping in to another job. But in his heart, he's like, mm, mm. what was going on? I believe the Holy Spirit inside of him was going, this job's not pleasing to me anymore. God, I got something better for you. 
And he felt good about it, and he did it. And within days, after he locked in his heart, followed, another opportunity came. Favor, favor, blessing, blessing, blessing. It never would have happened. Are we missing it at times? Right? First and foremost, walk in the light of the word. But that, that it pleases me. Or, or, or the opposite. I shouldn't do this. Don't do it. I don't understand why I can't do that. Everybody's doing it. You know, that doesn't bother them. You do what God's telling you to do. Amen. 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 And that's, how many appreciate this young man? He drives from Bradenton, Sarasota to come up to church here. Isn't it beautiful? It's not that far. See, isn't they got a great attitude? It's under 40 minutes. It's under 40 minutes. <laughs> The 30. But isn't that awesome for, he's getting a sensing or whatever. And, you know, we're honored that he's here. You know, I don't want to put pressure for him. That, you know, I know whatever God has for him. I'm going to believe in the best for Noah. Isn't he awesome? Yes. We, we love you, brother. We really appreciate you. Love you. Yeah. So here, I'm going to let the singers come up here. <laughs> Jordana's giving me the uh, nothing. nothing. <laughs> She's not giving me nothing. <laughs> I'm not feeling anything. <laughs> I'm not giving you nothing, man. <laughs> no, she's sweet. But this is what I want you to do. And this is the cool thing. I, I, really, I, really, I really feel like the Lord helped me to share today. I feel like he, um, I, think there, I believe they gave me utterance to help people. I feel like it's, I think there's some nuggets here. And for those that are watching, maybe you have to go back and listen to it again, but it's so important. But this is what I want you to do. God is so faithful. God is so good. We walk by faith, right? And, and God is communing to us. And he said, Enoch walked with God, and he was like the oxen, right? God sets those marks, and God has ordered steps. And I, I just want you right now, as we're just right now, just because I believe the presence of God, the, the Lord is here. He wants, he's, he's, he's speaking to you. Faith is here in this room for you to just, and right now, whatever God has been saying to you, or not saying, you know, telling you to do or not do, what, whatever step, and maybe you're like, Pastor, I drifted. I kind of, I know what I should be doing. But I, didn't, I haven't been doing it. But aren't you glad that the grace of God is like a kite? You know? Sometimes we're off, off the path a little bit. But I'm glad that God's grace doesn't let us go. And, 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 and you might be like, Pastor, I'm way over here. I, I've been a fool. I've kind of done my own thing and I knew better. Well, right now, right now, the Lord's going to pull you in if you're willing. If you're willing. Right? Just, just, just let him pull you in and just say, Lord, yes, Lord. And whatever God's been telling you to do or not to do, whatever glimmer of light that he's been speaking to your heart, right now I want you to say this together. We say, Father God, Father God I'm, yours. I'm yours. Not my will be done, but your will be done. And I only want to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for making it abundantly clear that I don't even have a shadow of a doubt the very step that I'm to walk in. And just like Asa, I thank you, Lord, that I will have a complete heart 